Hey guys, in the last video you saw me turn this G06 Zero 2 pulley cover thumb screw and in this video I'd like to go over how it was created in Fusion 360. A lot of people are interested, they're new to Fusion 360 and they're interested in how to uh, use the software. There's a lot of great tutorials from uh, Autodesk on this but uh, if you're interested in turning this particular item, then you might want to know exactly how I drew it up in Fusion 360. I was going to include it in the original video, but I thought it would be too long and maybe people might not be interested in that particular aspect of the uh, build, so I decided to separate it into two videos. So here is the pulley thumb screw. It's basically just a few cylinders with some threads on it. So let me show you exactly how we did this. I'm going to go to File, New Design. Then we're going to go up to Sketch, Create Sketch. And you can see the blue line represents our Z axis, and that is the plane that we want to have our stock on. So we want to click select this back plane here and now we are looking straight down the center of our spindle we want to go up to sketch circle center diameter circle we want to go right to the center here click and pull out now our stock is 0.75 and we're going to turn it 0.73 just to get a nice finished edge on there so we type in 0.73 we click it and set it and then inside there we're going to put a another circle that will be 0 0.30 that is going to be our little recess or our little step and then one more for the threads and a six millimeter thread is 0 0.03937 times six millimeters is 0.23622 so right here we'll hit 0.236 and that is our thread uh, now you just hit stop sketch and those are the three basic cylinders that we're going to need. You go up to Modify, press Pull. We're going to hit the center diameter here, select it. We're going to type in 1 inch, 1.0, hit Enter. Now you noticed our sketch went away, but if you go over here and you click there on Sketches, and you'll see a light bulb next to sketch one. We'll turn that light bulb on and we can get our sketch back. We're going to go back up to modify, press pull, click this stepped area right here, and that is going to be 0.3, excuse me, 0.3125, 5 sixteenths. Hit enter. And then right here, you can go back up and click Modify, Press Pull, or you can right-click on this area and repeat Press Pull, select it, and that is going to be 0.25. And now we have something starting to take shape. Select fit down here and it centers everything up. Now we want to go to modify chamfer. We want to put a chamfer on this front edge. And if you hold control down with windows, you can select these other two edges as well. And we want to put 0 0.03. And now we have a nice little edge. Now you can see we still have our sketch and we can turn that off 
by clicking on the light bulb. Okay, go back home. Now we need to put some threads here. So we go to create, thread, select the face that you want to thread. And then up here, a thread type, we want to put ANSI metric in profile. And it already puts the size in here default by the size diameter of the model. So we, it knows from this size that it's an M6 size. And if we had selected uh, standard threads, then it would be 0.25 because that's close to the standard thread size. But ours are metric and ours are M6 by 1.0. And that's it. And now we have threads. So that's a pretty simple, uh, easy little project to do. It only took a few minutes. So now let's go and do the cam function. So go to model, cam. And the first operation we want to do is face. Uh, select our tool. Uh, I'm using tool number one. Your tools will be different. Uh, 500 RPMs is good. The feed rate, we're going to go with eight. Geometry we won't have to mess with. Passes we don't have to mess with. We should be good. Uh, let me get this turned in the correct orientation. Okay, so you can see what's going on. Alright, on setup, if you right click here, we can set up our stock. So our stock is 0.75 and let's say 1.5 inches long okay and the model position is towards the offset from the front and we're going to offset it by 0.01 and that's just it's just a very little just to clean that face up. Notice how it went back to this because we changed the diameter of our piece so we can right click on that generate tool path and it'll correct that. Now let's just simulate that real quick so you can see what's going on. Pretty simple straightforward just a little facing operation. Uh, the next operation we want to profile it along the z-axis. Uh, we're using the same tool. This is a rough profiling. For geometry we want to select rest machining so that it doesn't machine a portion that's already been machined prior. We do want to take a finish pass and that will clean up the large diameter. So let's go with 0 0.001. Uh, roughing passes. Maximum step down. How about 0 0.0125. And see what that looks like. Okay. So you can see we're taking. We're cleaning up this side here where the large diameter is, and we're also cleaning this up. Uh, this is brass, and then our next operation will be turning profile. We want to this operation doesn't clean up these inside corners here and make them sharp, so we want to select a different tool to do that. That will be tool number two. You can see the difference in the tool.
again we don't want to select I don't want to select rest machining because it will only clean up the portion that the prior tool didn't get and I'll actually want to take a pass over the whole model in order to clean it up so what I'll do is I'll change my step over here to 0 0.001 and make sharp corners and let's see what this looks like I'm going to change this to two step overs and let's see what we got here now okay that's not going to work I've got to turn off roughing passes oh there we go okay and if we turn off we did the roughing with the first profile so the second profile is just to clean this up here can't really see the but it's following the lines here and it's also getting this little chamfer so let's simulate that and you can kind of see what we've got going on so far so our facing then our rough profiling and you can see how the corners there are round and then this operation here will come back and take care of that and clean up these inside corners and put this chamfer on the back side so after we've done that we need to thread so for our threading we need to select our tool mine is tool number nine and we just need to select where we want our threads to be and all the all all the other information is automatically put in for you for the threading operation now you can increase the turn the spring passes on and how many step downs I like to give it twice as many as they recommend just to make sure that my threading is cleaned out and also use a scan cycle and then the last operation is to part it off and we need to select our tool which is tool number six and our feed rate we're going to be going 1200 rpms and our feed rate will be 0.5 or excuse me five inches per minute We need to change our speed. Profile 1 will be going 1200 RPMs. And also 15 inches per minute. Okay. And profile number two will be going 1200 rpms and 10 inches per minute okay threading they figure out the speed feed for us it should be 0 0.0 3937 so it'll be 393 for our speed and parting we've already corrected so that's pretty much it okay so click on set up here and make sure that's highlighted and then go to simulate and that will simulate the whole project the first operation is spacing 
and then our roughing you can slide this to speed it up then after our roughing is our finish profile our threading and parting and there we have our thumb screw now a couple things I want to point out on Fusion 360 there is not a post processor that generates a G code that Mach 3 will accept for threading that I'm aware of and let me show you what G code is generated by Fusion 360 for this M6 by one profile it looks fine there's nothing wrong with this G code that I can see but for some reason Mach 3 doesn't like it so you can use the wizard that's in Mach 3 to generate your own threading G code and just replace 360's G code for threading with the one you created with the wizard or you can just hand write it like I did here uh, as you can see to, in order to thread there's not a whole lot of, lot of lines of code that you need to write so that's just something to be mindful of if you are running Mach 3 as I am so it's pretty straightforward and simple now you can come back and you can knurl this if you'd like or if you have a meal as I do and you want to notch this let me show you how you can put some notches in here down here is your timeline and it shows all the different steps you've taken in order to get to the point that you're at now in the model if you go down here and you right click you can edit this sketch and it opens back up the sketch palette and we want to do another center diameter circle and zoom in by rolling your center mouse wheel and this point right here let's draw a circle that's point one two five and back out go back up to sketch and go to circular pattern and then we want to select this object and then right here we want to select the center point and we want to repeat that Let's, you can do it as many times as you want but 12 is a good number and that will symmetrically insert 12 objects around your pivot point we can stop sketch turn it back on here so we can see what we're doing and then go to the back side we want to modify press pull we want to scroll in a little bit and select all these little portions of the circle right here touching the thumb screw there should be 12 if you can't tell if that's highlighted or not if you click on it and the number drops down then you know you had already selected that okay down here at distance we want to go all and then we want to cut we can go back up and turn this off and now we have a thumb screw with some notches on it. pretty straightforward and simple uh, I really love 360 it's it's great for designing and drawing stuff and uh, works really good 
so now you can go back up to uh, your cam and you can do another setup for your meal get everything oriented. There we go. Our stock is a fixed size cylinder and it is length 75. Okay. There we go. And then you just pick the appropriate cam function for your meal and notch these little edges out. Let's try 3D contour. And we need uh, probably a one inch, eighth, excuse me, eighth inch end mill. Oh, who knows? Let me get just regular flat end mills, all we need. Uh, eighth of an inch. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's see what happens. See if it generates it on its own. Okay. Well, we can definitely tell that we're going to need to change the height. So let me edit that right here. Bottom height. Let's try selection. There we go. And let's see what we got now. There we go, that's more like it. And we can simulate this. Pretty simple. And now you can put some notches on there. I'll just make you a jig where you can screw this into it and mill off the knurls. So that is our thumb screw for the G0602 pulley cover. I uh, hope seeing how I drew it in 360 was beneficial to you. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe by clicking on the link below. Have a great day and most importantly be safe.